Hey guys, Griselle here, and yesterday I was reading a blog post. It's something I do sometimes where I actually catch up with my feed, and this time I was just kind of looking for some inspiration. I've been having a hard time writing lately, and that's for many reasons, some of which I'm probably going to be doing separate videos for. But today I came home and there were some certain circumstances that inspired me to think back on that article, and I just kind of wanted to share my thoughts. So the article was a post by Theodora Goss, who wrote The Alchemist's Daughter, on her blog, and it was titled Writing Without a Net. I'll post the link below or above or somewhere for you to access this, but it was a very good article and I felt it was a very important subject and something that isn't discussed all that often. And the idea of writing without a net, um, as she says, you might think means like, you know, be fearless in your writing, but it's not. It's the idea of writing without a financial safety net, which is a situation that many writers are in, but I feel there's a stigma towards being a poor writer or a writer with a day job um, or maybe that's just me but I do feel sometimes that my day job does keep me from writing more but without my day job there's no way I could be a writer I have a two-hour commute one hour each way I have a job that is mentally draining I have to write a lot for my job I have to read a lot for my job I have to engage with other people a lot for my job. As an introvert, that takes a lot out of me sometimes by the end of the day. The last thing I want to do is think about anything creative. I just want to veg out or sometimes like go for a run or a walk or something that takes me completely out of my headspace and into another environment because I just can't do it anymore. But without that job, there's no way I could be a writer. I live alone. I pay my own rent. I pay my own bills. I, I feed myself. I clothe myself, I have a car, I pay for gas, I have two cats, those are expensive, pets are a responsibility, so I feed them well too, I don't skimp out on their health care. There's a lot of stuff that goes into just being a person and being someone who takes care of themselves. I pay for um, you know, doctor's visits, medication, as I've talked about my thyroid before, you know, it's not the most expensive health condition to deal with, but it is another expense that I have to plan for and think about. And there's no one there to really save me if I can't do these things. So I have to set aside money. I'm very thrifty, I will say. I, I grew up poor. I know how to save. I know how to set aside money for future expenses because growing up, there were times where my mother's health was in decline and we needed savings to get us out of it. There were times when um, my cat, who had diabetes, he passed away a couple of years ago, but he was sick. He required special attention. There were emergency services that had to be dealt with. There were all kinds of things that I learned to save for. So I'm very careful with my money and I'm very thrifty with it. But again, I need that job. There's nobody there to get me out or pay my rent or pay my electric bill or pay my cell phone bill or my wireless bill or all those other bills. I don't have cable, so that's one expense I don't have to deal with. But even when you cut out a lot of the modern luxuries, there's still a lot that you have to do just to live well. And today I came home to find that there was an epic situation involving pressure cleaning and my bathroom was full of mud. Nobody told me that the building was going to be pressure cleaned even though they pressure cleaned part of it last week and they told us it was done. They came back, they did that, and it was one of those moments where I came home and one, I realized that I love where I live but there are issues with it and one of the issues is just the messes that I encounter every so often because somebody didn't think to tell the people who live here that they were going to do these things. Um, there are inconveniences. There's a lot of inconvenience to being a renter and stuff that's kind of out of your control. But this place also makes it possible for me to write and again makes me totally dependent on having a job and having that net of just what I create for myself. I don't have anybody else there to hold me up. I have to do it all on my own and it's difficult and it, it inspires a lot of writing jealousy I would say especially on writer Twitter, 
when you go online and you see that there are all these people go doing like these word sprints at like 10 a.m. and meanwhile I have just walked into my office and there's no way I could do a word sprint at 10 a.m. because I've got a job to do. Sometimes people um, have a spouse that can support their endeavors. Um, as Theodora Goss writes, sometimes people have inheritance that they scrolled away and even if it's not a big fund or or just you know like enough money to be living luxuriously it gives them enough time to just sit out and write and do what they need to do in order to publish their novels. At the rate I'm going, I know that getting any of my novels to a publishable state is going to take a long time. There's no way that I'm going to get anything done before I turn 40 or whatever. And there's definitely no way anything is going to get published before I turn 35. So that, you know, it inspires that little bit of envy when you see in the writer circles that there are other writers who have that support system and who are shelling out books at a rapid pace. And you just think, if I had that, maybe I too could be that successful. And, and it's just difficult. There's no real answer to it. I'm just kind of like throwing ideas out there and just wanted to share my feelings. Having read that article, having come home today to find what I found, having, you know, dealt with all the stuff I've been dealing with this week with my health and um, just thinking about my mental state and my physical state and how slow things are going. There is that little bit of envy where I wish I had that and I don't. And I always have to remind myself that that's okay. It'll take longer. That's fine. I just got to keep going. So that's where we are today. But I just wanted to take a moment. I haven't really talked about writing in a while. And I really want to get back to writing and discussing my writing on these vlogs. And if you too are in this kind of a situation where you kind of feel that little bit of writer envy when you see your other, you know, like online writer friends being able to get their words in or do their publishing or do their critiquing and they have all this time for it. I mean, if you too feel that, go ahead and drop me a line. I'd love to share. I'd love to, you know, get to talk to someone about this and just see how other people feel about it. So that'll be it. I'll leave you guys for now. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, please feel free to drop it down below. I'll post the link to that article down there too because it is a very good article. I think it raises some very pertinent points about being a writer and having to have either a day job or some other source of income in order just to make life happen, least of all writing happen. So I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye. <music>